Good morning to all my good friends in the cotton industry, and welcome to the great state of Texas. I wish I could be there with you, but I'm here at our nation's capital this week. We're kicking off the 115th Congress. I don't need to remind any of you that the last few years have been particularly trying for agriculture. In fact, if you compare 2013, the year we negotiated the 2014 Farm Bill, net farm income has declined 46 percent. That's the largest three-year percentage decline since the Great Depression. Here at the House Agriculture Committee, we've been doing our part to draw attention to the problem. Last year, we held several hearings on the state of the farm economy. We've also been working diligently to determine what is and what is not working in the 2014 Farm Bill. When it comes to cotton, it's clear that the Stacks program simply hasn't worked. The shortcomings of Stacks are a reminder of the importance of having both sound farm policy and crop insurance. While crop insurance is absolutely vital, the support it provides is limited when prices tumble over a prolonged period of time. In the case of cotton, we've been looking at uh, any and all avenues to help. In December 2015, 100 members of the House requested that then-Secretary Vilsack use his authority to designate cottonseed as an other oil seed. He simply refused to do that, but he did offer a one-time ginning cost share assistance. And while we continue to search for a long-term solution, my ultimate goal is to ensure that cotton is once again covered uh, a covered commodity in the Farm Bill. As we start this new year, I'm hopeful that the election of President-elect Trump signals several good things ahead for rural America. At a minimum, it hopefully means an end to the regulatory assault our nation's farmers and ranchers have faced over the past eight years. While much remains to be seen, I've been a part of Mr. Trump's advisor, Agriculture Advisory Committee, and I stand committed to working with him going forward. It's been an honor to chair the House Committee on Agriculture these past two years. I grew up in rural Texas. I worked there most of my life, and I raised my family there. I understand that agriculture is not only the economic lifeblood of many rural communities, it's central to our values and our way of life. People in Washington are surprised when I tell them that 98% of U.S. farms are family owned and that they produce the bulk of the food and fiber in this country. These are the farm, family farms run by you, your neighbors, your families, your friends, uh, and or your clients. That is why it is important for us to be unified and to move in an action when our industry comes under attack. Next Congress will be in the farm bill mode and opponents of the farm policy will be sharpening their knives. We're going to need each of you to be involved. Our nation's health, security, and economic prosperity are predicated on the ability to feed and clothe ourselves. And while the federal government's primary role in achieving this should be to stay out of the way, there are several key policies that help ensure we remain one of the most blessed and prosperous nations on earth. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your program today. You're doing important work in your communities and your voice matters in Washington, D.C. God bless each one of you. God bless Texas. And may God continue to bless the United States of America.